आज देश की ओर से देश की टेलीकॉम इंडस्ट्री की ओर से 130 करोड़ भारतवासियों को 5G के तौर पर एक शानदार उपहार मिल रहा है दिस विल हेल्प इंडिया बिकम अ मेजर एक्सपोर्टर ऑफ हाई वैल्यू एडेड डिजिटल सोल्यूशन एंड सर्विस ओवर वन पॉइंट फाइव लैख रो वर्थ ऑफ स्पेक्ट्रम हैज बिन सोल्ड टू डे एंड रिलायंस जियो वॉज इन फैक्ट द बिगेस्ट बेडर प्राइम मिनिस्टर लॉन्च इंडिया First 5G test bed jointly developed by the IITs. Country is all set to join League of Nations where mobile 5G services are available. Hi everybody! On 1st of October 2022, the Prime Minister of India officially announced the rollout of the commercial 5G services in India, and this marks the beginning of another wave of digital revolution in India. And this also marks the beginning of the business war between four giant players in the industry, which are Reliance Jio, Bharti Airtel, Vodafone Idea, and the one and only Adani Group. But while most of us only know that 5G is faster than 4G, as students of business, very few of us know how exactly will 5G change the landscape of the Indian business ecosystem. So in this episode today, let's try to understand what exactly is this 5G spectrum all about. What is so special about it that the Prime Minister himself considers it to be an instrument for his 2047 vision? What is the position of Reliance, Adani, and Airtel in this 5G race? And most importantly, what are the industries and opportunities that 5G will open up for entrepreneurs like you and me? But before we move on, I want to quickly thank Growth School for supporting our content. Growth School is one of the most revolutionary startups in India that was recently ranked as the ninth best startup in India by LinkedIn. It is a platform whereby you can learn from the top 1% industry professionals. And here are three reasons why I personally love Growth School. Number one, its teachers are people who are currently working in dream companies like Google, Apple, Facebook, and Uber. Number two, their curriculum is designed in such a way that you can upskill five times faster. And most importantly, they have an awesome community whereby you can connect with a lot of like-minded people. Now, all this sounds expensive, right? Well, guess what? Growth School workshops cost you less than 500 rupees, and for 500 rupees, you get to learn from the top 1%, where you get to ask them questions live. For example, you get to learn UX design from Anudeep, who's a design leader at Amazon, and you can learn performance marketing from Deepan and Ashwin, who have worked for 150 brands like Google and have spent over 200 million dollars in ads. And just like this, you can learn from the best people at lesser than the cost of a pizza. Growth School has taught more than 3.5 lakh learners who have got massive salary hikes and even started freelancing. And for all Think School learners, Growth School for the first time is offering a flat 30% off on their workshops for the first 100 people. So if this sounds useful to you, use the coupon code TS30 and find the link in the description. To understand the power of 5G, we first have to have a basic understanding of something called the electromagnetic spectrum. And where does the frequency of 5G spectrum lie? For the non-science students, an electromagnetic spectrum is nothing but the range of frequencies of electromagnetic radiation and their respective wavelengths. And if you remember from our school textbooks, our eyes can only detect a small part of the spectrum, which is nothing but the visible light. In the spectrum, you have the frequency stated in hertz or cycles per second. So if I say 10 hertz there are 10 cycles of these waves per second if I say 5 hertz there are only 5 cycles of these waves per second and as the human civilization evolved we started to find application in different segments of the spectrum now in our context the telecommunication waves that are used for calling texting and internet lie between the radio and microwaves and within this range we have 1g 2g 3g 4g and 5g with the speeds and features increasing with each upgrading generation and in between 0.7 gigahertz to 40 gigahertz we have the 5g spectrum by the way 1 gigahertz is nothing but 10 raised to 9 hertz and this is where ladies and gentlemen the giant players of the indian telecom industry come in and they bought specific spectrums for themselves to kick start their 5g business 5g auctions which are scheduled to start tomorrow incumbents jio bharti airtel and vodafone idea will slug it out for up to 72 gigahertz of spectrum reliance jio ne 5g spectrum ki nilami mein kul 88078 crore rupaye ki sabse unchi boli lagayi if you really look at the difference between bharti and uh, jio It's essentially the 700 megahertz spectrum, which has taken away roughly around 39,000 crores. And if you understand the frequencies that they've bought, you can actually go on to understand the purpose behind their purchase. 
So let's dive into it. In 5G, there are three types of bands based on frequencies, low band, mid band and high band. The low band frequencies are frequencies less than 1 GHz, which in our case are 700, 800 and 900 MHz bands. Then in between 1 and 6 GHz, we have the mid bands and then from 24 to 40 GHz, we have the high frequency bands. Now out of all these bands, there were three specific 5G bands that the telecom giants were very very eager to acquire and each of them has a specific use that tells us volumes about the business plans of these telecom players. So let's understand these high demand bands. The first band is the low band of 700 megahertz spectrum which was bought by Jio. This is one of the most efficient frequencies of providing high speed internet to rural and dense areas and it is expected to give you speeds of more than 300 Mbps. Cherry on the cake, it's also twice as efficient as 900 megahertz and is much cheaper than 1800 megahertz frequency band. This is the reason why it got the second highest bids in the auction. Then we have the mid band frequency at 3300 to 3600 megahertz spectrum, which was bought by Jio, Airtel and Vodafone Idea. This is again very, very special because it can deliver speeds close to 1 Gbps in a very, very economical way. And hence, it's best for mass consumers. This is the reason why it saw the highest bidders and chances are if you are in a tier 1 city, you will be getting your internet through these bands. And lastly, we have the third category which is the 26 GHz spectrum and here's where we have all the four giants, Reliance, Airtel, Vodafone Idea and Adani. This is an elite, ultra low latency, ultra fast 5G band that promises speeds up to 10 Gbps. This is such a high speed that it's not meant for consumers at all. It's supposed to be used exclusively at the enterprise level to manage high grade technologies like manufacturing units and ports. So you see, the Adanis have specifically bought this band for industrial purposes and not for consumer purposes. And these applications include ports, logistics, data centers and other B2B applications or business to business applications. And apart from these, the other bands were bought by Vodafone Idea and Airtel, which seem to be less efficient but cheap to start with. So when the 20 year license of these spectrums were put to bid, the government earned a combined total of 1.5 lakh crores. Now you see, when we mention speeds like 300 Mbps, 1 Gbps and 10 Gbps, some of you will tell me, yeah bro, so what? Now it takes us 5 minutes to download a movie, later this will be done in 10 seconds. So what is the big deal with this? Well, this is where I want to introduce you to three superpowers that 5G will bring to the human civilization. And if you understand the power of these features, you will be able to foresee the game changing opportunities of the future. The question is, what are these superpowers? Well, the first superpower that 5G brings to the table is the application of Internet of Things. You see, one of the most important attributes of mankind that turned us from an insignificant ape to the rulers of the planet is our ability to communicate. Now, I don't know if you realize this, but then practically, today, you could actually talk to a dead scientist and learn from his mistakes so that you don't repeat them. How? Through research papers, through books, and through videos. But if you look at any other animal, they always start with zero, build a primitive understanding of the world, and they die. They never pass on the wisdom and coordinate with each other at the scale at which we do. So moral of the story is that communication is very, very powerful if you start building upon the data. In this case, just like we human beings communicate with each other and build this wonderful world that we live in, the Internet of Things is a concept whereby all the devices in your surrounding will get connected to the internet such that they start coordinating with each other and start building upon the data that they actually collect, therefore becoming more and more intelligent. To tell you about an application, today if you meet with an accident in an expressway, let alone calling an ambulance, there are big patches of the expressway wherein you don't even have range. So if you're alone and you crash, until someone else comes and sees you and decides to call an ambulance, there is a big, big delay. Similarly, even if someone calls a hospital, what if the hospital does not have a vacant ambulance? Then they will again make another call to another hospital and then they will call the ambulance guy who will then ask for the location and then after you send the location, the ambulance will start moving towards the patient. And even after the patient arrives at the hospital, the doctor does not have any idea as to what is the blood group of this patient, whether he or she is diabetic or not, which meds is he allergic to and so on and so forth. So again, they might wait for the relatives to tell them the details, resulting into more delays. And these delays can cost you your life. But in a world where Internet of Things has evolved, this is how the exact same scenario will work out. First of all, the watch, car, 
hospital, ambulance, doctors, police and toll plazas, all of them will be connected to the internet. So the moment the crash happens, the smartwatch or the car will detect the crash and immediately, just like Ola finds the nearest vacant cab, an algorithm will find the nearest hospital with an available ambulance. And just like an Ola driver gets an alert along with the location, the ambulance driver will get to see the patient's location. And the moment one of them accepts, the ambulance will start moving and the patient will be admitted. That's it. No phone calls, no delays, no calling here and there to see if an ambulance is available or not. Secondly, when the patient arrives, all the devices will have the medical details and insurance details of the patient, which can be accessed by the doctors. So whichever device is unharmed, whether that's a laptop, phone, watch or any other device, that device could be used to check for the allergies, diabetes or other medical parameters so that the doctors can act quickly without waiting for the relatives. Thirdly, the police will be sent an alert about the accident along with another alert to the towing company to come and pick up the car to get it serviced or repaired. This is how, without human intervention, the devices will coordinate with each other and save lives with 5G. The best part is, if the algorithm understands that the frequency of accidents in one particular patch of the road is very high, then the ministry and police will be sent an alert saying that something is wrong with this patch. This way, the police can check whether there's a sharp turn, potholes, oil spill or what exactly is causing these accidents eventually to be rectified. This is one of the countless applications of IoT and when the same thing happens in a giant factory with big machineries that coordinate with each other to optimize the manufacturing and supply chain of a company, that is what you call as industrial IoT which requires 1 to 10 Gbps of speeds and this is expected to be achieved through 5G. The second superpower is something called low latency. Now if you look at 4G, there is a 100 milliseconds response delay as in when you press a button, it takes 100 milliseconds to respond. But with 5G, this response delay could be cut down to 1 millisecond. So the question is, 100 milliseconds is still fine, na? why do we need 1 millisecond? Well, this is where we have the revolutionary cloud computing and cloud gaming industry come in. To tell you about it, until recently, gaming was primarily done in PCs and consoles like PlayStation and Xbox. And until recently, giant players like Call of Duty and GTA, they required you to have a high-end PC or consoles like PlayStation or Xbox. And they made money through CD sales. But the problem we hear is that in order to play these games, you first need to buy these 30,000 rupees consoles or a PC that will cost you 50 to 70,000 rupees. And because of this exorbitant cost of accessibility, the target audience of these games was very very limited. Because the challenge over here is that games like Call of Duty or Fortnite, they are very heavy games and they need advanced configuration for processing all the complex data and graphics that they provide. So if I press a button to shoot someone, ideally the act needs to happen without any delays. Because when you are playing a live game, there are hundreds of players reacting to every move made by the opponent. So if there is any lag in this entire process, the very experience of the game is ruined. This is the reason why they needed to have consoles or PCs that act as processing units so that you can actually have zero delays. But because that's not quite possible with 4G, the scope of the gaming industry is by default reduced because of this very high barrier to entry. And this is where we have the game changing concept of cloud gaming come in. Now just to give you a more relatable example, 5 years back if you wanted to watch a movie, you either had to download it through a torrent, buy a CD or we had to buy it individually from a service like YouTube. Apart from that, you even had to choose which quality you wanted. A 720p quality would need 700 MB space and 1080p would need 1 GB of space. So basically, you had to own a single asset, have the storage for it and have the device that is compatible with the quality of the movie that you downloaded. But today, if you want to watch a movie, all you have to do is pay for streaming services like Netflix and that's it. Even if your phone has 10 MB of space left, you can watch the movie in high definition. And this happens because Netflix stores all these movies in its own servers that are in Europe, Brazil and US. And the moment you press a button to play on your phone, the Netflix algorithm connects you to the server and streams the movie directly from its own server using the internet. Therefore, in real time, an asset of Netflix is being accessed by your device without the need of storage. And instead of paying for a single asset, you pay for a subscription to get widespread access to all the assets at once. This is very very similar to how cloud gaming works. Rather than owning a high-end PC or a console that is necessary for running these high-end video games, through cloud gaming, when you click on any game, the entire processing of the game happens in the company's server itself. 
So when you start running a game using cloud gaming service, rather than inserting a disk in a console at home, a server in Europe or Brazil will act as a high powered PC and does all the processing for you. And every time you press a button to shoot in a game like Fortnite, the input gets recorded, reaches the server, the server gives the output as the character shooting at someone, and then this translates into the video form and you see your character shoot the enemy on screen. And all of this needs to happen with zero delays. So basically, your device merely acts as a display for the outputs coming from the server. The only catch over here is that you need a very very high bandwidth and very very low latency in the internet connection, both of which will be provided by 5G. Similarly, IT companies could actually give their employees high speed, high bandwidth access through 5G without needing a high-end laptop individually. So in short, in the next 5 years, you'll be able to play the most advanced games and operate the most advanced softwares in the world with a simple screen, an internet connection and a subscription service. That's it. So from the business standpoint, the barrier to entry for these players and the hardware cost per employees with the IT companies will decrease by a large, large extent. Cherrying the cake for the gaming industry is that the cost of gaming will decrease because of subscription services. Therefore, the market of gaming will expand by leaps and bounds. This is where we have players like Google Stadia, Microsoft Xbox Game Pass and Nvidia GeForce Now. This is the second superpower that 5G will give to our civilization. And lastly, the third pillar is that we have high density of connections, which means 5G can connect 10 times more devices than 4G. Now this is quite self-explanatory, so let's skip it. These are some of the many many applications of 5G in India. And this brings me to the last part of the episode and that are the study materials to help you understand the 5G industry and the revolution that it's actually bringing along in India. Moving on to the study materials, the first thing I'm attaching is a document to help you understand the importance of 700 megahertz spectrum and why exactly is it so so special. Secondly, I am attaching the McKinsey report on IoT which will help you understand the power of this amazing concept. And lastly, I am attaching the documents to help you understand the crazy combination of cloud computing and 5G. So do have a look at them and let me know what you think. That's all from my side for today guys. If you learned something able, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube ever happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.